Punic Kings are so back and so ready for year number four. 85 overall at preseason. Old McDonald has walked through fire to get his team in shape. K-Staters bleed purple, but for this man, he bleeds golden potatoes. Despite a loss, the Lockheed Armed Forces Bowl put our team right on the map. We want to become way more than just a blip on the radar. It's time to solidify ourselves as a year in, year out contender. Big game Mitch has some competition with guys like Francis and Martino hungry for playtime. In fact, just looking at Martino, 93 speed, 91 excel, 96 throw power, and good accuracy, that's a lot better than Mitch. The biggest catch and bummer is he's a normal development trade. I still plan on giving him a look during some games this coming season, and if Mitch tries to get too cute and gives the ball away too many times, it might be time for Martino magic. As we prep for the season, Arch Manning is first team All-American. That's cool and all, but how about three Potato Kings cracking the second team All-Mountain West list? Trust me, way cooler. And while we're here scouting it out, let's get a peek at the rest of the league. Georgia, Florida State, and Oklahoma make up the top three. Any surprises going down the list? Well, Illinois, nine seed, and Vandy up to a 12th seed. North Texas cooking up a mean 15, UAB at 17, Mississippi State 19. And yeah, I guess that's to be expected four years into a rebuild. Some teams will start to actually be rebuilding. For us, the rebuild is starting to shape up and it begins all right here with the prospect list. Getting only half a star upgrade in the prestige world, this is huge for the recruiting prospects. You now got guys like Pete Brantley who are actually interested in CUNA, Idaho. Still got a fair share of two and one stars as usual, but trust the process because this is where Old McDonald turns a team into a contender by finding gems. The more prestige, the more high quality players are going to check us out. Cooking up something nice in the kitchen, we found our guys and of course take risks on four to five five stars as well. Not overkill, but just enough to keep things interesting because when you see a Robert Cobb, you want his corn to join our potato patch. Just like a tasty potato chip, Chip Coleman, a four star athlete would be a lovely addition. And you know what? I might just go ham this season and up the difficulty to farmer names only. You gotta be a food, crop, farm animal, etc. My friends, that was a joke. If I started a challenge like that, it would take this rebuild's difficulty over the moon. But seriously though, I'm excited by what I see in this class. Danny Ham, three star gem. Landry, a three star gem. Throw in some four stars as well, like Jose Avery. Rob Santucci, big receiver here in Pete Brantley. Six star Matt Fogg. And then of course, topping it off with corn on the cob. You know the Potato Kings have to secure this guy as our quarterback for the future. I am going to do everything in my power. Ohio State, Penn State, West Virginia, watch out because there are so many funny things I could say. Touchdown, can of corn, slob on my cob. All right, I'll stop there before it gets out of pocket. What is out of pocket is a week one matchup against North Carolina. Who scheduled this thing? Eighth in the nation. My fingers are crossed. We don't get blown out by more than three touchdowns. Jumping into the Gold Rush Classic after that, it's time we get our first win in the rivalry game. Mountain West early before we take on the other royal school, the Monarchs versus the Kings. Harvest Heritage Showdown towards the end of the season before we finish off with a couple salutes to service. You might notice there's no Gem State grudge match this season. It's because Boise State told us to take a hike. They want us to actually get better before we rematch. I'm seriously heartbroken. This is worse than losing Prince in the first ever year, first ever week of recruiting back in year number one. My man's already locked us out and chose his top eight. Maryland and Michigan haven't showed any interest in him, so why did he do us like that? Don't mind me just casually looking for another quarterback with a cool last name. Ezekiel Thorne, that's kind of farm related, but there's a deal breaker. Oh my goodness, this just might be a really good consolation prize. Emmanuel Pepper. You grow peppers on a farm, and some people probably eat baked potatoes with peppers. Six foot five field general. So naturally, as one does, I made space on my board to add Emmanuel Pepper. Gonna go ahead and scout him out. Hopefully he is the chosen one. Well, I guess it's good enough for me that he's not a bust. So I'm still gonna send him all I got. Moon is a gem quarterback athlete here. 90 speed, 85 throw power. Already has interest in us. Things get spooky when the moonlight hits the potato just right. Let's take a break on the recruiting front and jump in against the Tar Heels. First game of year four, I expect the stands to be packed with fans as we're just off the bowl game run. Excited to see what Mitch and the Kings got in the tank. And this is not gonna go off our way. Challenge level was definitely going to be maxed out because North Carolina is no joke with those rankings, man. I couldn't even, what? I didn't even throw it to that guy. Got sacked. The ball went ricocheted way off to the right. 
and they're gonna pick six this thing. Safe to say I know why this team's top 10. I would guess their defense has a big part to play in that rank, just like Sal Jizzy has a great part to play in our offense. Can't forget we just brought in Kavka, a five-star running back. So there's two guys that are young and very good, just like this young receiver taking a sophomore lead. Give it up for number 15, Vilma. End of the first half. I hope you like getting your potato smoked because we're getting destroyed 28 to 10. I've talked a lot about baking, mashing, and eating potatoes raw, but let's be real. What's your favorite way to digest a lovely spud? Let me know in the comment section down below. Because while you're typing away your answer to that question, it's not going to matter too much in this one. We're down 38 to 10 in the red zone. Here's what I'll do. I'll let Big Mitch go ahead and finish this drive off, hopefully get six, which he does to plow. And then I'm going to bring in number zero. It's Martino Magic. This one is all out of control. So let's go ahead and see what he is about. Two quick sacks. What will Martina do to respond? Not much you can do. Fourth and 15 with the all goes. He's gonna quick strike it right over the middle to Cropper. Picked up the huge first down and now we have new life. And with his legs, he's gonna spin left and get around two defensive ends. That's what the magic looks like. Matthew Martino trying to win over the fans' hearts here with his legs. And he's seriously gonna do it again. The defensive line is a swarming bunch, but he's able to run right around him. Run, Forrest, run. Don't ever stop. Let's go down the field. Vilma, quick strike. Surveying, surveying, going over the middle. Do you got me, Vilma? He does. There it is. The first touchdown for Matthew Martino, striking it to Vilma. One final bomb for good old time's sake. Just go ahead, line him up, and let it rip. That worked. Let's go ahead and find more things that work, just like this touch pass to Cropper eating the crop dust. We knew we were gonna lose, but we brought it back within 10, so I'm encouraged. Mitch wasn't horrible, so the job's not gonna be lost yet. Couple more games like that, we'll talk. Jabari Cobb overheard Old McDonald crying in his office when Cobb, the quarterback, gave up on us, so he went ahead and put on a good performance. Couple Mountain West player of the week accolades in week zero, probably because no one else in the Mountain West played. Tar Heels took care of business last week. It's time for the gold rush classic wyoming cowboys were on the road let mountain west play begin you already know what it is it's a conquest for the gold rush we're out in wyoming pokes ready to go they have a 3-0 series lead on us we just want to get our first rivalry win this feels like a little blast from the past down memory lane we're here where mitch had his first glimpse of greatness we still lost the game but like i said back then you never forget your first touchdown pass and that's exactly what we did at this field. Just because of that reason, I think good luck is on our side for today's ball game. I mean, look at us plow. Plow took like three, four steps and then dropped it. Are you kidding? By that logic, it could have been a fumble for how many steps he took. I'm just letting plow get plowed play after play. He can't seem to hold any of them on because the defense is swarming. Until that monster play got us right down within the red zone. Let's go throw it out to Hardy. Hardy boy, little showboat and touchdown, big six. Let's ball. That trophy is going into our trophy case this year, not theirs. Only the first quarter. I need to keep backing up my talk with some serious play. You know who likes to play? It's Mitch. Of course he does. He's feeling his connection today. Plow has stepped it up after his first couple drops and making up for it. Running a little read option here. Mitch keeps it. Bad idea. So he goes and passes the very next play right to plow how that man got stopped at the inches line beats me but jizz will go right on in and finish it off here we go right across my face cropper says i'm here i'm open i'm available coach gonna go ahead and use the curl flat there it is vilma first and goal and then nothing like a good stick to go ahead and get the job done what did I say? The boys are in scary hours right now. And yes, it's not my Monsters University rebuild on my channel. It's Cuna King style. You got to go see the rebuild to understand what the scary hour jersey is that I'm referring to. Trying to get a snap off. Come on, snap that thing, Cuzzo. And go for the end zone. Cropper, he's in there as time expires. Gold, Rush, Classic. We're finding a whole lot of it right now. Did I say we were finished? Not at all. Job's not done yet, so go ahead with a jet touch pass. Cut it in and out. Crop dust trails everywhere you look. End of the third quarter, I'm probably going to need to call off the dogs because this is a route in progress. Going to our freshman tight end, Spruce. He's got it. Love seeing true freshmen step up in big games. And yeah, let's sign off here from Laramie, Wyoming with a fourth and 20. You ain't gonna get none of that. Five out of five stars would do again. And Mitch, if you wanna do that every game, 
be my guest. I could have guessed this one, player of the week. But would you have believed me if I told you we were in the lead for Matt Fogg, a five-star gem right tackle? Six foot six, 300 pounds. The big boy is from Iowa and they know a thing or two about farm life. Here's an interesting little tidbit of information on Pat Knox, five-star DB. If you send the house, you get four influence points. But if you do what I do, and go ahead and give them the friends and family, that's also for influence points. What I'm trying to say is I'm saving 25 points and getting the same effect. I knew it was gonna be a battle for Pepper. Notre Dame really wants him, so as soon as the visits open up, I'm scheduling. Rest of the recruits looking pretty good. We are battling and leading in a good amount of these gems. Doesn't your mouth water when you just think of Pepper to ham for touchdowns? And I've been thinking about it. I'd be okay too if Moon went ahead and took this team by the reins and shot us among the stars. Around the league, a Mountain West player got National Player of the Week, Alex Fanene. On paper here, we can see Hawaii looks severely outmatched. 74 overall, they're falling off a cliff, whereas we are on the way up, sprouting like a beanstalk. Taking the party overseas, we're here at Hawaii. Old McDonald spent time looking at the farm soil rather than going to the beach, studying if a potato could grow out here just as effectively. I know, I know, we are a farm school after all, but I can report not every player was out they're checking the soil. Some did go to the beach after all. If the overall on the paper is true, this should be a day where our team can pat stad on the opposition and so far we're getting clamped. Old McDonald seriously called for a go for it on fourth down. Bada bing, bada boom. Next thing you know, we're ice cold and losing to Hawaii out here. This is not what I had on my bingo card. Fourth and inches, it's halftime. They're going for it on uh, I called up run up the middle. I called the run up the middle and the defense, he just walked into a sack. It looked like the defensive end was there to give him a big hug. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that blunder and run with it. Sal, looking to make one man miss, broke his ankles badly going down to the six. Absolutely crumpled that cornerback's legs. That was insane. After doing that, you have to go ahead and get points and Rawling secures it for us. From that point on, it was a rally cry. We're gonna go ahead and start stacking. Next one up to score. I think I got you on the list, Cropper. I wanna double down and say, I don't believe the overall ratings when Hawaii's playing us this tough and can we all just take a second there to say what was that hb direct snap runs backwards on fourth and inches you just can't have it and a thing that you can't have is letting guys like Vilma get hot. Mitch will happily take the blunder and go prove his prowess as a quarterback. Now a junior in an improving team, there aren't as many excuses that he could say for underperformance. So let's go and show him what a star looks like. Cropper down the sideline past the 10 in major, major touchdown. Put the few remaining fans to sleep. Let's complete this thing. Fourth down, major sack. That's ball game. Inspiring performance from Mitch and the defense stepping up when it mattered the most. Would have made for a long flight back to the States if we couldn't come away with this one. Knocking out timeouts and gonna knock out their hopes and dreams with a touchdown, Vilma villain style. 35-30 Hawaii maybe next year because this year belongs to the CUNA Kings. We're two and one in the young season. We feel pretty good as a unit overall. First hard sell of the year is for Jalen Landry. He's already working his way to the top three. I figured the race is close. Boston College is making ground. It's a smart choice. No wonder why Pete Brantley wants to come to us. He has two A minus A plus interest in playing time and proximity to home. Time to get to work is the only hard pitch that covers his interests. So we know exactly what he wants and it's time to go for the kill. Speaking of time to go for the kill, Emmanuel Pepper, we can schedule a visit and I think we do just that. My man is really interested in academics and CUNY King has great agricultural programs. I'm dying over here. Pepper wants to go to school at an agricultural school to learn all about farming, maybe open up his own pepper business. Attend that lecture, big fella. And that boosts our interest and we're one step closer. And it's hard to get away from sending the house even when it has that bonus influence. I was gonna say I know all three interests and we align pretty well but we're locked out because he's not in the top five yet dripping out in all great alternates it's Utah State week the road show continues for the third straight week at least Utah is a little closer to Idaho than Hawaii ready and well rested let's get to work with a touchdown and run over get out of my way type truck fourth and four they're already taking chances today and I don't think it's gonna fly sack turnover. It's a dangerous sight indeed. Going up against the Potato Kings who are hot. 
That is the first time we can say that. Competing in the Mountain West has had its share of difficulties until now. The way these games have been going, Mitch and the Kings feel like they can take on anyone in the Mountain West. Continuing our case, we're gonna throw in dot one up to CJ Cropper. Did any of you predict 21-0 in the first half? If not, how about 28-0? Because on this play, let's go ahead and just go get it. Spruce, freshman tight end, drag the toes, you're in. Utah State is getting absolutely cooked. It's a feast. I hope you all brought a plate to this bake out because I got so much smoke and leftovers for everyone to have a bite. Honestly, Utah State might as well just delete their program at this point. Any Utah State fans watching, I apologize. You guys just need a rebuild and it's not looking pretty for the team. It's not just us giving it to them raw. They've been beat by two other teams, 0-2 in the young season open wide because this one's coming right down the hatch might have to just come check in with you guys once the smoke clears 28 to 3 mitch with so much green grass in front yeah um utah state how do i say this 49 13 better luck next decade i kid you not i think we've had a mountain west player of the week every week so far this week was just extra special that's two now normally i would make fun of the nevada wolf pack because they are like the second worst team in the fbs from last year but for some reason i've noticed in my dynasty rebuilds there's like a 50 percent chance they blossom into a top 15 ranked team if you're a fan of the wolf pack you love to see it but in real life they're pretty far from it oh and two in year four of the rebuild so i can't say it's looking too bright right now in old mcdonald Donald hates to be the guy to come to your city and make you look silly on your own home turf, but it's what we gotta do now. We've come so far just to hit a field goal, so of course we're gonna send this thing to the corner. It's Cropper. Textbook pass, textbook catch. Now Sal's trying to finish this thing off. Third time's a charm, pounding the rock again, hitting that outside with some speed. He's in. The floodgate is open, but same with Nevada. They opened it up, bounced out of a sack, step up to scramble then just throw it away. Quite Houdini-like there just to give it all up in the end. The howl of the wolf pack it is screeching loud up in here. And I don't know where we were going on that pass. He's really gonna pick six this thing and we're in jeopardy now against Nevada. So what was I saying earlier about coming into opponent's turf and making them look silly? We're the only ones looking silly right now. Terrible decision on that last drive. We need a good, clean drive right here. Just past midfield, it sounds like a good time to go ahead and make a big play. We're gonna step up, throw it back to Hardy. Yes, we got the whole defense fooled and we're into the red zone. We've seen a lot of spruce action, but how about Dykes, the other tight end? Well, he's not open on this one. Young Jr. is, and he just plowed his way in. It's never truly over until it's over and I don't hear anyone singing in the crowd, so that means there's still a game. All right, Mitch, one play at a time. Take your time, think it through, just don't get sacked. Third and 13, a little more urgency needed here, so let's go ahead and go for the quick strike. Dykes, no, he looked so good, so open. Fourth and 13, over the middle, come on, big plow. Bruh, I can't believe we just walked in here and laid an egg. Congrats to Nevada for winning their first game of the season. Quickly turning the page with our first commit out of the Bronx. Jalen Landry is a gem three-star DB. And this secondary is about to look like Fort Knox if we can lock in Pat Knox as well. It's official. We're probably going to lose Pete Brantley, one of the best looking receivers I've seen. Four-star gem with 95 speed, 94 jump, and he's six foot four. The playing style deal breaker just had to come in. My plan was literally to schedule a visit this week. Instead, I'll schedule visits for guys like Matt Fogg. With two players visiting us this week, it's a battle for royalty. To celebrate this occasion, we're gonna go with the all gold royal unis. Their kings rule land or whatever, but our kings rule over the farmland and potatoes all around the world. So this should be a fun game all the way down till the final whistle. You don't just walk into CUNA, Idaho and expect not to have a tough opponent on your hands. Old Dominion looks solid with a star quarterback back there, and I think they are progressing better than some Mountain West teams. Our unit needs to bend, not break in this goal line stand. And we could go ahead and get that final stand here, third and six, knocked down for a fourth. Holding the opponent to a field goal, that's a win in our book and double win, he missed. Number five, shanked a chip shot. Mitch saw the missed kick and inspired his troops to get back out here on this field. Wide open cropper right into the red zone. Two big plays later, we're all the way here and let's finish it off with a touchdown to Vilma, left open. Number 15 gets his home team on the board again. If we can avoid a collapse here right before halftime, 
that is the ideal route. Old McDonald keeps reminding his team that four star prospects are visiting us. And so for the sake of the future here, we need to win. And it seems to be an effective strategy because we're playing hard and taking back the lead. Now this drives all about insurance and we're gonna take the check down to Plow. Gonna dump this one cleanly to the Jizz Master. He was wide open. Mitch and Plow developing a nice connection here. Both have the fire logo as he just went and snagged that out of the linebacker's hands. When you're hot, you're hot. Let's cook and I want to keep cooking. This time, Rawlings is hungry. I feel like this play is for Cropper, so let's go ahead and give it to him. Thank you, sir. Can always count on this man to step up. If I had to take a bet, I bet I could look at the school records and see his name atop the receiving touchdown list. But what's important now, after blundering another touchdown here, we need to get one of our own. Settling for three points, this should give us a two possession lead. It really should have, but that was before we missed the kick. I can't make that stuff up. Huge moment right here in this game. If they don't get it, which they don't, it's our ball. And I'm not saying it's over yet because eight points, a lot can happen. Just like a fumble ruski recovered by old dominion tried to get cute and ice out the game it really backfired and now we're looking at a old dominion team down the field breathing a small sigh of relief they score a touchdown miss the two-point conversion and now we're one first down away and one timeout away from this one going dark abusing the jet touch pass i wonder if adaptive ai is about to kick in coach old mcdonald tells his guys to go for it like no kidding it was a coach recommendation here we don't get it it turns over to old dominion in practically 10 yards or so away from field goal range so this is a must get on fourth down teammate interference for the drop this is not a drill our teammate knocked the ball down from our other teammate and no we get cooked that's gonna do a bad taste in old mcdonald's mouth should have just kicked the field goal or punted oh no 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 at least we still have all our timeouts that's as much as i can say first one completed up the gut by hardy let's rush right back to the line if they're gonna give us right up the middle of the field why the heck would i not take this every time timeout a lot can happen in two simple plays and we need to keep this thing alive down to our final timeout gonna call a double post we'll see how well it goes i feel pressure and this is not gonna end well so let's spread them out with four seconds left third and six want a hero are we gonna get one go into the end zone vilma it falls to the ground in defeat this absolutely could not have happened this is insane 19 points in the fourth quarter two four-star prospects here including pepper i think it could be wraps for our dreams simming the week to find out i hope they enjoyed their potato fries in the stands fingers crossed did they still want to come we got one and we got another but not pepper just kidding there's pepper okay i don't feel bad about losing anymore of course winning is hands down the most important thing the second best thing that leads to more winning is bringing in top prospects so the sting of defeat is no more i'm telling you it was the world-class potatoes that sold pepper and rob santucci for as much as i have been gassing up pepper i need him not to be a bust jose avery's a student of the game and i want to bring him in i noticed a few more four stars available and so of course i'm gonna add them to my board i freed up some hours last week landing those recruits and i plan on landing more this upcoming week so i'm gonna go ahead and give scholarships and prep for the next batch halfway point in the mountain west we're three and three more importantly three and one in conference play if we keep taking business here we might meet in the gem state grudge match championship edition before we can think about championships we need to think about fresno state what will be the game plan in today's game against the dogs do we pound and ground or do we ground and pound fresno state the stadium is empty out here minus a couple hundred fans i guess people really be sleeping on mountain west football these days i guess it's okay if other mountain west teams are slept on but never sleep on the cuny kings it's all starting to come back to me this was the field where we lost last second in a heroic comeback from the dogs after we went up like four touchdowns had a huge cushion that cannot happen and will not happen today back and forth this ball game has gone we are in the red zone once again threatening and guess who none other than sal jizz with the big score our dude is a versatile dual threat just like plow has butter fingers plow that was not very kind of you cropper on the other hand redeemed him let one fly mitch can you hit your man cropper what a comeback trail by number 16 there he was burnt by like three steps and fought all the way back in it i don't know if it surprised you but it surprised me when that happened and on 
This play, Sal, big carry. Fresno State looking to scare us once more back within five. We need these points. I mean it when I said we're not messing around with the Bulldogs this year. We've done enough of that in the past. Plow, I can't stop looking your way because you're open. Thank you. This time securing it in. Game on the line. Fourth and three. Fresno State looking for a strike. They got it over the middle. 83. Rumbling, tumbling, spinning. Here we go again. Fourth and two. He's not going to get it this time. Gates seals this one out. Running down the the sideline with one hand all over that pig skin beautiful pick six showboat gates touchdown cuna kings as primetime would say we're not coming no more we here and on that pick six gates has announced to the world cuna kings are here what did i say we came, we saw, we conquered. Mitch, great game out there and all around team effort. Cropper pads the stats again. That's probably Mount West player of the week. One small step for Cuna and one giant leap for Potato Kind. Time to lift off with Moon. A senior season for the ages right now. Trying something new here with Pat Knox. I'm swaying him. And it seems to be working as you can see on the right three actions giving positive influence. Pat Knox is at the top of my list and we're bringing him in for a visit week eight. Keeping my eye on our Iowa boy, Matt Fogg is this close to choosing Cuna as his next home. I got some time and recruiting hours to scout out the four stars and usually in a rebuild four star and up. I don't even bother why you ask. It's because all of them would make a huge difference to the team. So far, these guys are all passing the test. I think it's time for old McDonald to spend 10 points and unlock the motivator archetype. This will allow him to keep players hot in the game and get bonus XP for draftees. I don't know the data behind it, but for me as a recruiting focused coach first, tier three has got to be the most important option off-season training boost that'll help get the overall up onward and upward our ascent continues against UNLV obviously old McDonald never wishes ill on his team but he's secretly hoping that they get like seven wins this year so they can go bowling in the famous Idaho potato bowl I'm just messing he wants his team to get as many wins as they can but selfishly I can't stop thinking about how cool it'd be to play in that game I can see it now huge turnout for the CUNA Kings in Boise Idaho playing for the potato bowl point is if we're already destined for a lower tier bowl this season might as well give us that one once again putting an asterisk on it i don't think we're destined for a lower tier bowl unless we lose another game or two winning out would take our team to nine in three which is crazy for a good year resurgence unlv has other ideas though cashing in first it didn't take long for the potatoes to bounce right back into this one let the potatoes bake and here we go cooking it to plow mash them up bake them up stick it on a skew massive connection a cropper over the stadium pulse i was able to audible the vilma to send him on a corner route because i saw something in the secondary that made me think it was free brilliance from old mcdonald and a vilma touchdown defense needs to hold here big sack right in the pocket second and 14 looking to do some more damage off the receiver we went and that's the guy he took. Send in an overload blitz here on third and inches. I know there's only 13 seconds left, so it's probably unlikely he was gonna run the ball, but amazing open field tackle right there. Did the trick and held him to a three point attempt. Needed another trick on defense, but couldn't get it done here in the third quarter. So it's back to the offense we go. Vilma raises his hand, says, I'm here coach and I got you. The game against Yolna V right now is turning into a good one. Cutting it back field all the way to the left. We have one man to beat. And if I had a block there, that would have been a crazy touchdown. Could have been a movie, but instead we gave the ball back up to UNLV cashing in for the lead. Mitch, I need you to dig deep right now. Third and massive. We're going to go hit our streaking receiver who got past him. Vilma to the house. 20, 10, 5, touchdown. They need this drive bad and they're going to get it and some too down to first and goal here they are now going into run first mode with two minutes to work there really is no urgency to pass you can just get the right play find it dial it up and cash in for points that's what they did that means the cuna kings are looking in from the outside but it's not for long. Coach McDonald says dial in just one play at a time and we will go ahead and get down there really big third down no problem yes problem here it is past midfield no going back now fourth down easy call when you see two linebackers blitzing thanks to them we get thanks to a choke job by mitch 
we lose by three. Vilma, eight catches, 230 yards, five touchdowns was not enough. What a darn shame this one fell by the wayside. You would think for someone that got onto the national player of the week list that they at least won the game, should have had the UNLV game under control, but now facing the Colorado State Rams, there is no excuse. I'm not just saying that because the Rams are a two-win team. I'm saying it because we have a five-star recruit in attendance for this one. And he's on the sideline witnessing our team offensive hold and the offensive lineman surely thinks he can help. So you see, we need his services, which is why we need to dial it in like that strike to Hardy. So far, so good here in the first quarter, a jet touch pass. It can only get better if we're heading down the field like that. In the red zone, huge third down. Let's go for a strike out of reach of the tight end, intercepted. Despite the hard effort, it ended up in the wrong hands. Not this time. Plow has this one with a mile of space. Off to sell, up the middle. I don't know, this just felt like a good time to try out Kafka, one of the best running backs coming out of his draft class. Don't get to see him on the field much right now because we have a senior backup in Hardy who's doing a great job receiving. But heck, if Kafka keeps running rampant like this, I might need to get him more touches. Showcased a lot of Kafka. Now let's see what Hardy can do. Back to him on the the receiving front. This one always gets the defense a little confused here. As you can tell, they don't know where it's going, where we're going. Minus 10 was the right answer on the last one. So I want to try it again because I don't believe that is the result every time. Absolutely not. Hardy, way to go. There's no way we don't redeem ourselves like we just did there. Bell's going to spring it into first and goal mode. Right before half here, it wouldn't hurt to let Kavka try to get his first collegiate score. And I'll go ahead and try one more time. Kavka, kick it up the gear, up the middle, up down to the one. He had his chances there. Now it's Cropper to finish it off in that camera angle. Seriously now though, who plays Road to Glory in that camera angle? It's hard to see anything. The way this game has been going, our offense on fire. They need this fourth down in a sack ends their drive. In their hopes of winning were squashed long ago. Touchdown before the end of the game, I don't really care. Because like that, it's over. 42-28, CUNY Kings get the win they deserve. Up to five and four. We still have a few more left to turn this season into one that's unforgettable. At the game this week, Leon liked what he saw. And so did Matt Fogg at a Davenport, Iowa. Pat Fort Knox, cornerback supreme. It is a beautiful day to smell the potatoes. So many hours freed up, I can finally turn my attention to the three stars that I added on my board a long time ago in search if there's any gems. I hope we can find some because some of these guys have been sticking around the whole year. After the bye week, we got Chip Coleman and this four-star tight end is gonna be enjoying pepper on his chips. What a year it has been so far. Losing to North Carolina, winning three big games before dropping to Nevada and Old Dominion by only one possession. Two more big games and one loss by another one possession score. You can tell Kuna's on the cusp of blowing up. I see three potential wins in our path, two and six UMass, Harvest Heritage Showdown can never look past these guys. They beat us every game so far, but 0 and eight Air Force and one and seven Army military academies are not up. No potatoes in the Heisman race, but Eli Holstein is holding firm at the one spot. Jalen Shelley out of Wisconsin right behind him as Kavion quickly for the number one Baylor Bears enters the race. A Penn State tandem rounds out the list. In the Mountain West Conference, Boise State and UNLV remain flawless in conference play. Harvest Heritage Showdown out of Massachusetts, the Minutemen are heading all the way across country to Idaho. Essentially, sea to shining sea. Take a quick glance to your left and to your right. At five and four, we're a winning team with a decent bowl potentially inbound. Not to mention a historic rivalry game right in front of us. We cannot seem to bring fans to the stands. I'm just telling you, when we start to make our national championship ascent, I don't want to see fake fans. The window to get on board is closing, and it's sooner than you think. Clearly, yes. Yes, old McDonald needs to work out some kinks because the team has some work to do as Hardy bust one and kept going. Thoroughly enjoy a busted run like anyone else. Mmm, Cropper, that was clean. Anything goes in a rivalry game, and I think Plow knows the stakes. Look at the Minutemen just stack this box. It was risky of us to run the play action, and that's why. Someone was bound to burst through that line. And yeah, we felt it for sure throwing it up while getting hit could not hang on plow never a bad thing to just take points and get the lead except we couldn't hear it was short 
as we hit the LeBron Selly, we missed the field goal. I'm convinced the offensive line didn't even look up to see where that kick landed. Anyways, we'll take this deep shot bomb on third and two. Didn't hit him, but we'll need to hit someone here on fourth down. Yes, sir, plow. Way to plow up field. First in goal, Mitch likes to get behind a convoy of blockers and just kick it up another gear. Touchdown big old Mitch. Minutemen back to work on offense here. Third and 18. They got 13 back. Set them up nicely in field goal range. And I want to go ahead and try power again. And that's the last time I'm calling that when we're not in the red zone. Mark my words. And Cropper says, mark my crop dust. For a two and six team, UMass's defense is playing us very tightly. No fly zone every which way, defense align all nine yards. With seven seconds left before half, Mitch was able to get the team right down in to the red zone and hit his man for the touchdown. It was literally one shot and a field goal, but the one shot was all we needed. Fighting tooth and nail for this rivalry game, does Vilma have the corner? The answer is no, but on fourth and two, does Mitch have the edge here with a read option? The answer is and a resounding yes. Nothing feels better than taking risks and having them pay off because Cropper is gonna finish this drive off. Right where we need to be, and the slant went. He won, then lost the DB battle. Really don't know what got into UMass. Their defense is inspired for the Heritage Showdown. It's clear to see even at two and six with nothing left to play for this season, a rivalry game is all the inspiration they needed. Fourth and inches in the red zone. Where was the quarterback looking? Allegro all the way to the house. Will the linebacker have the Jets to finish this one off? Yes, 15, how do you do? Dagger to end the Harvest Heritage Showdown in emphatic fashion. Fans love to see it. The cup belongs to us. Gold Rush, check. Harvest Heritage, check. We're literally just missing one, and it's the Gem State Grudge Match. And if we can fight our way into the championship game, we might meet him there. Old McDonald pumped about the win. That's bowl eligibility and six big ones in the regular season with still two left on the calendar. The pick six at the end, good enough for player of the week accolades. A couple games left in the season. This is a look at the college football playoff bracket. UNLV up here in the four spot. That has me really beating myself up because we were in the thick of it that game. Ranked 10th in the nation. It's a really big week against Boise State coming up for them. Should be fireworks now in the bull projection list. I'm curious if we're up in here somewhere. Not the Armed Forces Bowl again, please. Give me the Idaho Potato Bowl. How do we get the Idaho Potato Bowl? Well, it starts winning here against Air Force and then beating Army the following. I feel like it rains a lot here in CUNA, Idaho. I'm not really sure. It seems abnormal with the amount of games they've given us in the rain. Thankfully, Mitch comes well equipped with the weather umbrella, as you can tell underneath his badge. Offensive line was not well equipped for that last pressure by the defense, and we're gonna go for it on fourth down. For a split second, I didn't think we got it, but Spruce had some reach in them. Way to go, Sprucey. And now on the jet touch, we have it all. Touchdown. Beautiful. One thing leads to another. Respectfully to the Air Force Falcons, they're one and nine. There's no reason we should be close at all in any of this game. And bing, go, Cropper. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be very difficult to replace that man. And Vilma is going to have to be one to do it. Essentially, at the two, we just need to take the easy route. And that is... Guess who? Cropper. Do I say it? Do I say it? Do I say it? Crop dusted. Yeah, I'm sorry, Falcon fans. I don't know what happened to your team this year. They don't look very good. Military Service Academies definitely got nerfed from NCAA 14 to College Football 25. One in nine is just not good. And Air Force usually is like a six, seven, eight plus win team. It's hard for me to actually imagine them falling off a cliff to a one win team. So it begs the question, is it too unrealistic now for military school academies? I don't have room to comment since I haven't jumped into a military school rebuild yet. It's definitely on the list but I can't say yet. I'm sure a rebuild will negate some of the rules that are affecting the AI logic in their sim progression. Heck, I could be reading way too far into it and it just might be a bad season after all. No touchdown there from Cropper. I wanted to challenge that. Instead, I guess I have to trust the referee's judgment call and it's gonna cost us. Hardly matters in a game quite like this. 28-7, no shot whatsoever today. And there we go. Another win, 28-7. Cuna having a good second half stretch right now. I was super curious to 
see how the Boise State UNLV game went, and there is the answer. 34-13, Broncos taking care of business. As it stands, CUNA's looking on the outside as two six and one teams are ahead of us. And just great, UNLV has one in 10 Wyoming for their final matchup, and you already saw Boise State's facing one in 10 Air Force. Definitely unfortunate and out of our control. What we can control in this situation is how we prep and fight against Army in this next matchup. Showtime in our season finale against one in nine army we have a whopping 60 70 fans in the stands but this one truly goes out to them for their dedication to the team expecting some trickery here on fourth down no sorry old mcdonald dialed the right defense and out come the offense the boys looked good in all gold and we came out in style against air force so we thought heck look to the left look to the right about 100 fans maybe more in the stands let's go out in style wearing the gold down the sideline cropper wants to go out in style too we can't forget it's senior day and it's all about the ones that sacrificed so much to make this team what it is today i'm especially going to be calling cropper's name today because he is like 40 yards away from a thousand piece on the season and we just got a big chunk of those yards that dude is special and look at the crowd go crazy seriously on the verge of becoming an eight win team and no one in the cuna idaho community stepping up to show up let me know in the comments section would you show up to the game regardless we're gonna look to continue the onslaught one more time to cropper gotta be careful not to hospitalize that man in his final game instead let's go to the young gun the future in spruce the ever pressing question will the black knights even get on the board this game take your bets now i'm gonna say no i don't think they will get on the board realistically it's extremely difficult and i mean extremely difficult to shut anyone out in college football 25 but our best chance is right in front of us. And bummer, what did I say? It is hard to shut someone out in college football 25, and it's not gonna happen today. I ain't worried about it, and since it's senior day, I wanna say thank you to Plow for all of his contributions. Touchdown, baby. Old McDonald seriously can't say thank you enough to this team that made everything happen. You look around at this group of seniors, it is part of the first class that was here with the winless group. I'm happy we can send the seniors out with a win in this one. The best part yet is we have one more encore in store at the bowl game. Fingers crossed we get a good matchup, but you already know which one I'm hoping for. Tacking on another to make it 42. And there you go, old McDonald celebrate. You done yourself a great service. Eight wins, four losses. This was one heck of a year, our best year, and a super good class of recruits about to hit campus. The CUNA Potato Kings are in the driver's seat now. The seeds have been planted, watering has been done over the last four seasons, and we're about to sprout big time. I'm ready to reap the harvest and make our national championship run, but I'll pump the brakes there because realistically, we're still two to three years out from that type of conversation, and there are a lot of challenges ahead. Predictable finish to the last week of the season. UNLV took care of one in 10 Wyoming, and Boise State beat one in 10 Air Force. So they will rematch and battle it out for the Mountain West Championship. Bull projections were wrong last time I looked at it, but I'm hoping we have a good chance for the Potato Bowl. For whatever reason, they really want Hawaii to get in there and they wanna send us to the Hawaii Bowl. I guess it's best we just wait and see as Alani Cheek joins the ranks. The moment of truth before we get there, Sateki Choi, four-star DT from Hawaii says yes to the CUNY Kings. 2027 Heisman winner, shout out to Eli Holstein. Whereas our guy won the best defensive back award in the nation. I mean, 75 tackles seems a bit high for a corner, but only two ints. Man, are you serious right now? Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful, but we're right back at the same bowl game. This time against Troy, I guess they really wanna see Old McDonald again, and this time they want him to win. Before we get to the game, early national signing day, we have the 16th best class in all the nation. Two five stars and seven four stars. I need to investigate why Randall Glenn Glenn won the award, and it's probably because he had 93 tackles, seven TFLs, and two ints. You divide that by 12 games, that's almost eight tackles per game, which actually is an insanely high clip for a DB. Not to mention he caused a couple fumbles. Surprised Cropper didn't win any awards because he went out with 18 touchdown catches. Individual accolades aside, the only thing this team wants more is a bowl game victory. We're back in Fort Worth, Texas, where we were last year. This time it's Troy, and this time it's gonna be different. Let's go for the win. The show is getting started right now. Opening kickoff to Bloom, ready to return it back. Number 29, let's go, baby. There's Mitch and there's old McDonald. This team's gone from zero wins, three wins, six wins. And if they can get one more against Troy, that's nine wins. No joke, I can't make that up, but that's crazy how we've gone up three games 
every single season. Does that mean we get 12 wins next year? That is going to be the toughest ask yet, and I don't think it's very realistic. But for now, I'm just going to keep soaking it up as a king sponge would. Out of the Sun Belt, Troy is a pretty decent team. I mean, getting nine wins is no small feat, so congrats to these guys. And I'm wondering if they've ever been properly introduced to the crop duster, because here he is dropping balls and making McDonald sad. Well, McDonald had a farm and on that farm, he's requesting more touchdowns. Mitch threw for 45 touchdowns this season, a pretty solid clip, a little too many interceptions, but make it 46. Down by a score right now, and it's about to get worse, interception. Time for Mitch to turn it up. We need a better drive right now. Here's the snap, number five surveys, strikes quickly. I got baited so bad on that. Never too late for a comeback. 28-7 at the end of the third. Gonna go over the middle. I want Pater before the quarter expires, so I quickly snap it again. Hit him for the touchdown. It's Vilma. Comebacks need aggressive, risky plays, and a fourth and two is the play we call up keeping the drive alive. Never say die. This unit is far from giving up. This team has worked way too hard for the season to go up in flames, so I need to do something about it. Not so much me, more so I need Mitch to step up and lead. Show me what you got, big man. I'm gonna be quiet now. Costly, costly fumble and a moment of silence right here. Pass interference, let's move the chains and continue the fight going to the sideline. Not a happy camper at all with how that last one turned out. A fumble just cost us the game. I will go and score right now, but it's not gonna matter if we don't get the onside kick because we're all out of timeouts and this game is over. I think my success rate is still uber low on these things. So let's go ahead and slam the ball and yeah. That went not even close to 10 yards. Sigh, that's two years in a row. We dropped the Armed Forces Bowl. I'm telling you there's something in the air at this bowl game. They don't like us. I guess it just means there's a lot more to look forward to and anticipate, especially in year number five, as Oregon in Houston, Texas wins the 2027 National Championship. We turn our attention to the transfer portal and I look down at the list, see Ben McKay, four-star right outside linebacker from Ohio State. You you already know that man's gonna go crazy, so heck yeah, I'm scouting him out. And let me just add the remaining three stars. Everyone's gonna go ahead and get a scholarship, 50 points, the whole nine yards up in here. Competing against Rutgers and Penn State, we have plenty of time to get on this man's interest. Still got extra recruiting hours, so let's whip up a few more high school players. In that bunch, we got Mafu Mawia, Andre, another gem, and Small with no small set of skills. Scholarships for the gem players, and that's how we're gonna wrap up the recruiting board. Ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, we got them and so many more national signing day and we see our team crack the list at the 12th spot not even a competition here in the mountain west the training results are in mitch birmingham leading the group 89 overall as part of a 87 overall team across the board a couple other notable call outs danny berger up to an 87 and shoot just a ton of seniors at 80 overall plus we're gonna need a lot of fill-ins just to part with one more gift for y'all i'm curious what some of our recruits came in at i want to start off with pepper elite dev trait put a friggin exclamation mark on it there's no doubt this man is our new potato king just because i'm curious about siante bullock he's pretty high overall he is an impact so pepper lock it in bradley moon is a star so there's a trio of good quarterbacks in the room just gonna watch and learn as mitch navigates the senior season i can't spoil everything but just take a look at some of these overalls Choi an 81 overall dt and pat knox 81 overall you're gonna have to come back next week to find out what dev traits some of our new recruits we're just bringing in to the potato kings are really hope you're soaking it up like a sponge and if you are hit the subscribe button drop a like leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this series so far in the meantime don't be afraid to check out any of these college football 25 videos on your screen now